Hi friends, welcome back to another Read Aloud with Mr. Ward. So for today's story, I have three hens and a peacock. I figured this was a perfect story because constantly in my videos, you can hear the peacock screaming and yelling outside. Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud. The hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until... That peacock showed up. The cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually, the peacock wandered down the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. Oh, look who's outside the chicken window listening to all these complaints. The peacock had heard every word. For days he moped about, moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Humph, clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the old peacock stay here to be useful while you hens take the glamorous job down by the road? The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan! Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight. And nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and clock. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down the road. Look at them all bedazzled. The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked by the road, waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers. But... Every car whizzed right on by. The peacock sucked in his tummy and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny penthouse door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no cars stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might. But no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg. Not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house? asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows? said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. 
We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled the biggest smile you ever saw on a bird's beak. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find the hens. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day. We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true. Why, most of them didn't even slow down. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, Fancy Feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down to the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. Oh, but if you look at the picture, it looks like a whole new adventure might be starting. I see another box falling off the back of a truck. I wonder what's inside. All right, think of your best guesses of what that could be. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys. So for an activity today, not too long ago, there was a game going around where people were getting water bottles and just filling them a little bit in the bottom and trying to flip them around and make them stand up like this. So I thought it'd be fun to get little paper plates and put score numbers on them. And then I'm gonna spread them all over the table. And if I can make it land inside one of the plates, I get that many points. So you can play with a friend, you can go up to maybe 10 points or 15 points, however high you wanna go. But that is you have to flip the bottle, it has to land in the plate to get the point. If it lands like this, you could say maybe you get one point or something smaller, but if it lands in the plate, you get those points. So I'm gonna see if I can get them to land in there. Oh. I got two points. So go ahead and give it a try. Have some fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.